Hey everybody, Phil from Two Forks Woodworks. So I made a video the other day about uh, a little stand they made for my bonsai tree. And uh, a friend of mine watched it and then texted me. He was probably one of the three people that did. And he texted me and said, how in the world did you make a square hole with uh, your drill press? And I had used this setup here to do it, my mortising jig. And I realized that uh, I didn't do a very good job of explaining how this works, apparently, because he's a super smart engineer. And if he couldn't figure it out, then obviously not only did I do a bad job, but I'm also a terrible photographer or videographer, which you all know if you've seen any of my videos. I don't apologize. I'm doing the best I can. So anyway, I thought I'd make a video about how this thing actually works so that you have a better understanding of it. And uh, if you're thinking about getting one of these, I'll, I'll show you how to, how to work it. It's a really handy thing. If you have a drill press, even a, a, a tabletop one, uh, this will work on that. Uh, and if you do a lot of Morris and tenons, uh, if you're doing it by just chiseling and drilling or whatever, this thing's not expensive. Comes with different size bits, and uh, I recommend you get one of these. Uh, it'll it'll save you a lot of time. So I'll run through the steps. It's not complicated. I'll try and make it quick, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll make a, a decent enough mortise and tenon joint that you'll understand how this thing works. So let me get everything together, and uh, I'll show you how it's done. Ah, oh. hypnotize somebody. So here's here's basically what the chisel looks like. All it is is a square chisel. It, it's it's hollow, on, on, so you can put a drill bit on the inside of it, and uh, basically the drill bit just slips inside this whole thing, comes out the other side, and it does the majority of the work. It, it while it's spinning and drilling, and then this just this little bit of this chisel thing has to cut away. Uh, and, and that's what actually makes it square. Pretty, pretty ingenious little thing. Um, the only thing with this is that you have to be pretty accurate with it. So while we're setting the whole thing up, make sure that that's one thing you keep in mind and while you're setting it up is that you need to be precise. Otherwise, your joints come out a little bit wacky. So this is a different one, but it's the same idea. It's a smaller one. So you just take it and you put it up into this, into this collar here and the drill bit will actually go up into the into the um, chuck on the drill press. That gets tightened up. And then the square chisel part gets tightened up inside of this. And that way it all moves together and the drill bit does the drilling. The square part does the chiseling, making it square. So now that we got this thing set up, uh, we're going to raise the table up a little bit because what we want to do next is make sure that the chisel is actually nice and square to your fence. Otherwise, you're going to have your, obviously, your uh, your Morris is going to be a little bit crooked in there. So again, as I said, make sure that all this stuff is set up really nice. Take your time to make sure it gets set up. The, the actual operation of the whole thing is pretty easy compared to the setup part. But let's make sure we get that right. So we'll raise the table up and uh, and check that for square. All right, so we've got our piece in here. Um, got this little guy is what holds it down. And you're definitely going to want to use that because I guarantee you that you will not be able to hold this piece down with, without that. If you try and do this just on your table and you're trying to hold that thing down, you won't be able to do it. it, it this thing builds up a lot of, a lot of friction when it's in there um, and it, it'll hold tight. And kind of the whole technique that I use basically to do this is I, I, I have this block on here that, that is the end of where my mortise is. And I like to start at the other end, right there, the other end of my mortise that I have marked on there. And I'll make my way down so that I'll, I'll do this first cut and I'll go in, you know, a quarter or so, and then I'll move it down another quarter, another quarter until I hit up against there and do my last one. Then I'll start going in increments a little bit deeper until I get ultimately down. I think I'm going to go an inch on that. I've, I've set my, my stop on my uh, drill press to stop at one inch. The reason I do that is because if you plunge this thing in to, into an inch at the very beginning, it, it's, it's really, really hard to get it back out again. So I, I tend to take little nibbles of it. And then once it's cleared out a little bit, once some of this material in here is cleared out, then you can start going a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. But just plunge it all the way the first time and it's going to get stuck in there. So I try not to do that. So let's see what, what happens. Let's see if we can make 
make a mortise. So I got that right there where I want it. And then I'm going to start going and I'm going to start doing it. And I'll, I'll speed it up at, at that point once I, once I get going. And then so you don't have to watch me slowly do all of this. All right, we've got a hole. Now, obviously, it's a. I was just going quick on there, and I should have been cleaning it out, so it nicked it a little bit on the edge. But that's okay, because typically, what I'll do after I, after I do this, is I'll I'll take a, a sharp chisel and I'll clean that thing up because it's, the edges are a little bit rough, and that's not unusual. So you just account for that. It's just a tiny, tiny bit, and it and cleans it all up, but not not too bad. It's gonna. It's definitely gonna work out. So now I've got a tenon already cut. So what I'll do is I'll check and make sure that that's close. My tenon, I usually make them a little bit big and, and I want them to have a little bit of an adjustment. So if I make my tenon a little big, if it's nice and centered, I just clean sort of both sides off of it after this is cleaned up. Once you get it all cleaned up, then the fitting should be pretty good. So let's, let's test fit the tenon and see what, where we are. All right, so been about 10 minutes or so cleaning out this for a little mortise came out nice looks nice and square and then I cut the stenon on my table saw a little while ago and there's no rhyme or reason to the size of this it's really just so I can demonstrate how to do all this stuff if you want to make yours a little bigger I'd probably make this maybe slightly bigger you don't want to go too close to the top because it'll it could blow the top out so just be careful of that but, you know, I'm sure there's ratios that you're supposed to use and all that. I never do because that's who I am. Anyway, let's check it out. I think it looks like it's going to fit pretty, pretty well. Pretty well. <laughs> it fits great. I surprise myself sometimes. I really do. I mean, you'd think I'd have more confidence in my stuff, but... I'm surprised how great that came out. So I'm happy. Yay. Good, good for me today. So anyway, and these are the one thing I like about mortise and tenons is usually on, on, they, they come out nice and nice and square. There's not a lot of fighting it. And, uh, it's just a, I guess that's why they've been doing it for 400 years or whatever it is. But, um, yeah, I like, I like it. Came out great. It's a fun thing to do. Uh, it feels very old timey carpentry type thing. So I think sometimes I just get a piece of wood and I, I literally just make tenants, mortise and tenants because I like to because I've, I've got problems. But uh, yeah, I hope I hope you give it a try. That whole setup with the with the fence and the uh, and all the bits that you get with it, five or six of them or something like that, from down to sort of a quarter up to about three quarters or something like that. I, I think you probably get that for a hundred bucks. Um, it's there and. They're fun. Just, just do it. Just try it. Make yourself some mortise and tenons. You'll, you'll enjoy it. The problem, full disclosure, is that I bought one of these, and this is a, this is a Festool Domino rig, and uh, this is an unbelievable tool. They, you, you press down on there, that bit comes out and wobbles back and forth, and, and it'll, and it cuts tenons or mortises. Sorry, in, in the ends, cut a mortise in here, and then this part comes loose, and you, you tap that little domino as they call it into into that slot and uh and you've got yourself a pretty easy joint very strong and they line up almost perfectly usually and uh, that's pretty much rendered my whole mortising setup obsolete uh pretty quickly if i gotta make a big mortise and tenon i'll do it on that thing but if i i got a bunch and they're easily repeatable then i i break this thing out it's got a bunch of different uh, dominoes that come with it, the little little tenons, the loose tenons that come. This thing is unbelievably versatile. 
The problem with this is that it's the most expensive tool I have in my whole shop. Of all the tools that I have here, chop saws, table saws, joiners, planers, and all that, this one's almost double. This thing was nearly a thousand dollars. So you probably, if you're just fooling around every now and then, don't need one and you can use the mortising jig and, and cut your tenons on there. You'll probably feel a little, a little better about yourself doing it too. This just seems kind of production-y when I do it, but sometimes I gotta do a little production. So get yourself a mortising set up, throw it on your, on your uh, drill press and go for it. You'll, you'll feel good. You'll, you'll love doing it and you'll be real satisfied. And I just love the strength of these things and I like making them, so I hope you do too. So I hope that was helpful. I hope Jason, if you watch this video, you now understand how the, the chisel system works, even though I'm sure you got it when I showed you the first time. But all right, I hope you all enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.